Hello, welcome to the video. Today I'd like to show you this, how exactly I motorize my B-Roller. I've added a motor, a controller, and all the linkage necessary to make it go, not just forward, but also backwards. So stay tuned and I'll show you the full process. That's how I did all of this right here. Okay, and here are the goodies I bought. Number one, the motor. I uh, picked it up off of eBay. I think it's some kind of surplus uh, gear reduction motor. It's DC. It has uh, 42 revolutions a minute, 1 17th horsepower, 12 volts DC, ratio 60 to 1, torque 65 pound inches. So. Hopefully it's big enough. Uh, well, the hardware store, no, farm and fleet store. Picked up, that's an idler. That's going to go on the shaft and motor. That's going to be a small one. This is a big one. Somewhere in this mix, I got another collar thing to go there. So, um, Master links, disconnectable links. Japanese made chain, only the best. I don't even know, there's other things. So, I guess we'll get going. The rough plan is, the big one is gonna go on here. Motor, either here or here, one of these sides. Probably less in the way to the side. I don't know. Think about that for a minute. Uh, I have to swap these shafts because this top shaft moves back and forth. It's longer the one, which gives me space to put the sprocket on the end. Um, but it can't be moving with the chain on it. Well, here's a setup for the old finger uh, smasher. The top shaft still moves back and forth. The reason why it does that is to align the uh, the dies either offset or, well, wherever you want it. I'm kind of limited by how far it can get on the sh on the shaft because uh, otherwise this gear is gonna hit it. So stick it out a little further than what I wanted, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up and then weld up the uh, collar and the sprocket for the motor too. Did some looking around the scrap bin and I was able to find this in various pieces. I figure it'll work pretty well as a motor mount. Considering it's got holes in it, right? So here's what I got going on for the motor mount. I figure uh try to make a couple slotted holes so this whole bracket will go up and down and then maybe weld a nut here so I have something that I can tension the chain with on the bracket. Uh, try to get away from using an idler, idler pulley if I need to. It's a short chain and everything should be like, I guess fairly on center. So this is what I got now. Uh, just a couple slots and the bracket moves up and down. So hopefully that takes, takes out the slack. So I got the chain on the unit. I got everything bolted back up. Uh, I'm gonna put 12 volts on it just to see what it does, see if it works. Uh, right now I've just got a little battery trickle charger. 12 volt supply, we'll use that. Very delicate. Not wrong. All right, here we go. I mean, that's a pretty good speed. That's full tilt. So 
As you can see, went with something real simple for a chain tensioner. Should work good though. And uh, yeah, up next is to figure out the controller. Forgot to show you all this, but this is the 12 volt controller I got. Real, uh, I don't know, it's just a cheap Chinese unit, but came with there foot controller. And this is where I'm at now. I've got the electronics. I wanted to find a box to house them in. This is a ammo box from Harbor Freight. It was the right size. I cut it down. Everything's going to go in there. It's going to mount on the side of the uh, bead roller. Switch on the front. Got the bracket welded up. Got a kind of floor bracket. Something I move around made for this. So next thing is just to assemble it all and uh, see how it works as a whole. On an unrelated note, quick review of the Pringles, Wendy's, spicy chicken flavored chips and or crisps if you're watching in black and white. Uh, they nailed it. Tastes like complete horseshit. Got everything back together but I'm having issues. So the power supply is a battery charger that's rated for 12 volts. It is a older, old school, unregulated power supply. So it just has a transformer and a bridge rectifier in it. Um, I think it's it gets bogged down too easily. Uh, so without anything going, we're at 16.4. If we move, there's no load on the dies right now. So this is just the motor. And it's already dipping below 12 volts. Where if we look at the supply that the motor is getting. I mean, we're below the 12 volts it should be outputting. So I think what I need to do is I need to order a uh, higher amperage, higher supply power supply. So I guess I'm going to have to do that. All right, new day, new parts. I got a hold of a higher amperage uh, power supply. And uh, last box I was using was a little small, so got something that uh, aesthetically is just gonna look a little nicer. Color matched. The power supply, the controller all wired up. Got the nice little box on it here. And as you can see, Goes slow, fast, slow, fast. Uh, last thing I want to do is this thing. The controller had a uh, forward reverse switch. I want to mount that near the pedal down here. So I've got two different toggle switches that are used in uh, electric guitar pedals. Mount that down here. Figure out which one works, grab a voltometer and uh, test these. I'm not sure what type of switch this is. I know this one's a triple pull, triple throw switch. So one of them will definitely work. Here's what I came up with. You'll have to excuse the uh, PSE I'm wearing, but. We got one direction. We got the other direction. Take it apart, paint it, put it back together. Should be all done. All right, this is the final setup. And I gotta say, I'm pretty damn happy with how it came out. The profile is still nice and skinny, which allows me to tuck it back into the corner where it was. I'm kind of limited on space. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, turn it on and uh, chuck a couple pieces through this thing. Okay, so I got two kind of normal dies. Let's call them dimple dies. Set up, uh, and I've got this piece of metal here. I'm going to put a uh, little uh, reinforcement in. Um, it's pretty thick metal. I don't know what gauge. So, uh, yeah. Sorry. All right, so... Start by getting it positioned where I want it, and I'm gonna put 
some tension in there. I don't know how many passes I should make. Let's try for not too many. Really stress this thing. There. So the first pass is actually pretty good. You can see. Pretty pretty good channel in there. Let's give it one more. more oof this time. Yeah, one more pass. Just to stress that. Get to the other side. plenty of power there straighten this out quick and I'm gonna uh, change out the dies and uh, do uh, a few more passes okay so I've got the die swapped out uh, this is a, I don't know, a tipping die that I made if you want to see a video of that I've got that up on YouTube I'll try to put a link somewhere so this positioned on the line, tighten it up, and we'll try to give it a first pass here. Okay, so that worked pretty good. Tighten it up and give it another. A daisy, not what I wanted to do. I might go with this. Hopefully, I can fix that little mistake with a hammer. If not, well, this piece is for absolutely nothing, so I guess it don't matter too much. Definitely need a little more practice machine but the idea the idea of the tipping die second mistake the idea of the tipping die is to give you an edge so you can finish it off on a hammer and dolly, give yourself a nice bend. So you can see it's starting to oops, starting to tip it there. Tighten it up quite a bit. Give it one more go. All right. Nice and slow. Tighter? Tighter. That's fucking tight. Oh, yeah. Hammer on a little bit, see what, see what it looks like. Just a scrap piece to show, but you can tell. Definitely improve the uh, functionality of the machine. So, um, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I don't know what else. What else can I say? The video's over.
Click on the next one. This is it. There's nothing more.